morning and welcome to Victory Church. Today is our worship service number 156, September 22nd, 2019. We are going to sing to the Lord. I invite you to stand up, friends. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, that we are alive. Thank you, Father, because we have you. You are the most important gift in life. We have you, Lord, in our hearts. We have you, Lord, in our lives. You are the reason of our existence. You are the reason of our lives. And we are here today, Lord, grateful that you are giving us life and many blessings. In the name of Jesus, receive the songs that we prepare for you, Lord. Amen. This world can be cold and bitter Feels like we're in the dead of winter Waiting on something better But am I going to really hide forever Over and over again I hear your voice in my head Let your light shine, let your light shine For all to see Start a fire in my soul Fan a flame and make it grow so there's no doubt or denying Let it burn so brightly That everyone around can see That it's you, that it's you that we need Start the fire in me You only need a spark to start a whole blaze it only takes a little faith Let us start right here in the city So these old walls will never be the same Over and over again I hear your voice in my head They need to know, I need to go Spirit, won't you fall on my heart now Start a fire in my soul Fan the flame and make it grow So there's no doubt or denying let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire. You are the fire, you are the flame, you are the light on the darkest day. We bear the hope, we bear your name, we carry the news that you have come to say. fire in my soul fan the flame and make it grow so there's no doubt or denying let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you that it's you that we need start a fire in me you are the fire you are the flame you are the light on the darkest day Start a fire in me
When I'm running far from home Remind me who I am When I can't receive your love Afraid I'll never be enough Remind me who I am If I'm your beloved Can you help me believe it?
a part of your plan when I try to pray all I've got is hurt and these four words thy will be done thy will be done thy will be done
Dear Lord, we love you, Father, with all of our hearts. Father, there are days when we struggle with many things, like losing a relative inexplicably. Sometimes we struggle losing a job. Sometimes it's our health. Sometimes it's lack of money. Sometimes it's loneliness, Lord. We struggle. But we know, Lord, that you love us. Your love for us is real. And you, Lord, have a plan for our lives. This plan, Lord, has wonderful things. But the most important part of your plan, Lord, is that we learn to love you, to depend on you, to trust in you, because you are the reason of our lives. You and you alone, Lord. No other thing, no other person, no anything material, Lord, but you, Lord, you and your eternity. And we love you, Lord. This morning, Father, we are here trusting in you like we do every single day, Lord. When we get up, we just put our eyes on you, Lord, hoping that you will do something beautiful in our lives. Because that is you, Lord. That is your heart. Your heart is to love us. Your heart is to bless us. Your heart is to protect us and guide us. So here we are, Father. We bow down before you, Lord. We surrender to your authority, Lord, and we say, Lord, that your will be done. Whatever you decide, Lord, for our lives, whatever you want us to do, we know you have a plan, and we trust you, Lord. And you hear our prayers, Lord, day and night. Fill us with your Holy Spirit right now, Lord. Please, Father, pour down more of your presence into our hearts in this very second, Lord. We receive from you right now, Lord, your touch, your love, your healing, your restoration. The new things that you are bringing to us, Lord. The new blessings you are bringing to us this week. The new people you are bringing to us this week. New individuals to love, new people to serve, new tasks, new assignments, because that's you, Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. You create constantly, Lord, and you have a plan for our lives. You know what we're going to do, Lord, and we trust you, Lord. Father, guide our hearts to worship you, Lord, regardless of the circumstances, that you will be our God. Our Lord, we love you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We love you. Amen. This is the moment that I invite you, my dear friend that is watching, feel free to go to our website, bchurch.us, and look for the tab, Give Online, and then you can make a contribution to our church, or if you prefer to use a text message, the phone number is 432-268-0007. Thank you for the time that you are investing watching this video from Victory Church. We hope that you will enjoy it. What were you made for? What is the purpose of our lives? This is a great question, you know. What, what is what we can hope for the future? Well, for our viewers, we want to invite you to go to our website, bechurch.us, and look for the tab bulletins. Download the bulletin, and we are ready to start with this message of today. September 22nd, 2019, our worship service number 156. Thanks to the good Lord. Many of you have eaten a pomegranate. In fact, you know that here in the property we have, uh, I believe, two trees, pomegranate trees. 
And uh, some, of, some of us have tried that fruit directly and it's delicious. But let me show you here something so interesting about pomegranates. You already know this, but it's good to, to review it. What kind of products do we have out of pomegranates? There are many products or sub-products, if you like. One of those is the classic juice. And some of us enjoy that juice regularly. I like to take it in my breakfast, you know, a little shot of that. It's good, powerful, sweet, but too many sugar, so you have to be careful with that. But all, all the other people, they make smoothies out of that and uh, some candy. Some of you enjoy candy. Uh, I was introduced to this pomegranate dark chocolate candy. It's wonderful. And the other kind of candies, uh, these bars are delicious. Do you know that there are cookies made out of pomegranate? Delicious uh, subproducts, muffins, delicious. These particular cookies here, they are um, oh shortbread cookies with pomegranate. Let me tell you, that's something that you need to look for. And uh, not just in that department, but there are individuals developing products like soap, shampoo, lotion out of pomegranate with that flavor. And uh, of course, there are others that they like salads and they put uh, in their salads pomegranate seeds and uh, another kind of uh, desserts. Some people go and put a variety of fruits together, including the pomegranate, and others they prefer make tacos with pomegranate. Unbelievable. Salsa, you get, you get your chips with your salsa, and this other uh, delicious meal, I don't know what is, what is kind of like a toast that I found. It's making me hungry, really. All that out of pomegranate, desserts, pies. If you like salmon, you can fix the salmon with this glazed pomegranate on top of it. You can make your own marmalade or jam out of the pomegranate. People that like chicken, baked chicken, you can make it with pomegranate. For those that are vegans and they like only vegetables, you can actually prepare your carrots with pomegranates, for instance. Well, as you, as you could see in the screen, there is a huge variety of products that come from pomegranate, from a fruit, my friends. So today, we are going to study and reflect about what is what we are able to do and produce, create, manufacture, and develop for our communities. But in order to understand that, uh, it is necessary to go to the scripture and read this beautiful passage in Psalm 139 that, have, that has amazing concepts that you probably never saw before. Let's start with this one in verse 13. It says, you formed the way I think and feel. Do you hear that? It's a prayer to God. You formed the way I think and feel. You put me together in my mother's womb. That is amazing when you think about it. The way that you think and feel is exactly the way that the Lord made you. He formed you that way. Verse 15, my substance was not hid from you, when I was made in secret and curiously formed in the lowest part of the earth. We always talk about the mystery of life. We know that as a result of the union of men and a woman, there is a baby. We know that. We have the idea, but still is a mystery how that can produce life. You and I are the result of that. It's amazing, really. And there was God. The moment you were conceived was the Lord there watching you. But listen to this verse 16. This, my friends, it's amazing. Listen to this. Your eyes saw my unformed body. In your book, everything about me was written. My life was planned out by you and settled before 
I began to be. If you understand what we are reading here, you are going to be really amazed with the power of God dedicating part of his existence to make you exactly as you are. You know, when, when you go to visit a friend, you go to their home and they say, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like some tea? And they say, oh, I have, I have one of your favorite desserts. And they cut you a piece of pie or bring you ice cream, whatever you like to eat. When you go to see your friends and this person stops doing whatever he's doing. And suddenly you are the center of the attention. And this person gives you his or her undivided attention for, let's say, half hour. How do you feel about that? You feel special. You say, wow, this person is giving me his time, his attention, her attention, her dedication to me. Okay. And that is just by serving you a cup of coffee or dessert. Now imagine how important you are that the Lord wrote in a book everything about your life. He took the time to consider all kind of factors about you, the way that you think, the way that you feel. Now, what we think sometimes is, I suck. I hate the way that I feel. I'm a disaster of person. Unfortunately, we see ourselves that way. But that is wrong. It is wrong because the Lord doesn't make mistakes. He was not wrong when he said, I'm going to make you this way. Now, sometimes we think about silly things like, but why he made me so, uh, with this ears, this shape? But why my nose is in this shape? Why this kind of hair? Why I am not pretty as like such and such person? Why I am too tall? Why am I too short? Why am I too skinny? Why am I... This or that. And we think that there is an error somewhere. But no, we are wrong. There is no error. The Lord took his time to make you. He took his time to create you. Your eyebrows, your hair, the way that you laugh. Your loud laughter sometimes that for some people could be obnoxious. It's not obnoxious for the Lord. You know? The, your voice. The way that you walk. Your mannerisms. Your style. Your silly jokes. Your humor. The way that you are. Exactly the way that you think and feel. The Lord made you that way. The Lord made you exactly that way. You are unique. I want you to breathe deeply and say, I am unique. Please say it again. I am unique. You know, there is no other you in the whole world. There is no one else like you. You are the only you that exists. And you know what is even more interesting about it? Is that you are the only one you, not just now, but throughout the whole history of humankind. Never in the history of world of the world was anybody like you. Never. And never will be anyone like you ever again. You are unique. There is no error in your life. The way that you are is the way the Lord made you, period. And you need to see that greatness and be grateful about it. Perhaps we can laugh at our face in the mirror or, our, you know, whatever. My friends in high school always, always tease me because of my skinny legs, you know. And when we play soccer, I was a good soccer player. But they were always laughing at my skinny legs. 
Flaco. Well, you know what? It's true. Sometimes in my home, I am wearing my shorts and my flip-flops. And, and for time to time, I cross in front of one of the mirrors in my living room. And then I see myself and I come back and I look at the mirror and I see my legs and I say, oh gosh, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> but that's me. Maybe you are looking at your fingers or your toes or your nose. I don't know what is what you look at yourself and you are just thinking, ooh. Well, that's you. You are unique. And instead of feeling sorry for yourself because you don't have these muscles that somebody else has here, you know? Yeah. Or you don't have that beautiful hair that somebody else has, or whatever. You should be grateful and say, Lord, you made me the way that I am. Praise God, I am who I am. You know, with all my mistakes, if you like, or defects, whatever you want to call it, but you are unique. And you should say, thank you, Lord, you made me, and I am unique. But there is a big reality here that we are the result of the influence of certain people in our lives. You are the result of the influence of people in your life. And, uh, and we know that some of them were our parents, correct? Now here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, there is something that it's amazing. And still today, people don't get it. The importance of repetition. Repetition. For those who play instruments or speak languages, we know that the key is repetition. For instance, this word Deuteronomy. Yeah, for Americans, Native Americans speaking English, that word probably is not too difficult. But for someone like me that was born in another country, and I am an American citizen now. The word Deuteronomy was a challenge. And several times I tried to do it and I was filming a video and Tracy was laughing at me because we stopped the recording time after time when I was trying to say Deuteronomy. And she said the word for me and until I think I got it, Deuteronomy. Kinda. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. <laughs> you know what it says here? Always remember these commands that I give you today. Be sure to teach them to your children. Talk about these commands when you, you sit in your house and when you walk on the road. Talk about them when you lay down and when you get up. Repetition. Repetition. So say after me, parents say. Go and brush your teeth, you say to your children. Make your bed, we say to the kids. Wash your hands before you eat, we say to the kids. Repetition, repetition. And that will make a big difference in what we can perform in the future because we are the result of that influence, parents and grandparents. Some people were raised by other individuals, not necessarily your parents or grandparents were there. Maybe it's the, the case of yours. And perhaps there was a, an uncle, an aunt, or maybe, I don't know some other individuals that raised you, but they made an influence in your life. The other influences, the examples that you had when you were a teenager. You probably remember when, we were, when you were a teenager, you, you admired somebody, certain guy. You know, we guys, we saw a guy and we thought, man, that, that, that dude is cool. He's cool, man, right? And girls, they look at somebody they're a beautiful woman that they say, oh, she's beautiful. I wish that I will be like that. There was an influence. And of course, naturally, later in life, our mentors, they made an influence in our lives. So the question is, can we still change? We, we know the Lord made us the way that we are. But is there any chance that we can change still today? And of course we know. But we need to understand that we like pomegranates. We were made for a purpose. Today, I want to share with you ideas that will help you to discover your purpose in life. What's the vision the Lord has for you? And what are the things that you can accomplish in life? Because you were, you were made to do something special. Before I go to five 
critical questions to discover that vision. I want to share with you passages in, of the scripture that show us that the good Lord not just made us the way that we think and feel, but also he gave us gifts and talents. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 and 11, it says, The Holy Spirit gives one person the ability to speak with wisdom or knowledge. Also, he gives gifts of healing, the power to do miracles, to prophesy, to judge what is from the Spirit and what is not, to speak in different kind of languages, and to interpret those languages. The Holy Spirit decides what to give each one. He gives us gifts. Romans chapter 12. Verses 6 and 8. We all have different gifts. Each gift came because of the grace of God gave us. The gift of prophecy. The gift of serving. The gift of teaching. The gift of comforting others. The gift of giving to help others. The gift of leading. The gift of showing kindness. All those things come from the Holy Spirit. He gave you things. You have to understand that. That there are spiritual gifts in you they are there perhaps they are dormant maybe you are not aware of the existence of those gifts inside of you but they are there can i still do something with my life some people ask i'm too old maybe you are that kind of person maybe you are Reflecting on, on these videos and you, you, you like what you hear, but you are thinking, I wish that I would hear this when I was young, but I'm too old, you think. I want to remind you the age of Abraham and Moses when they were called to the ministry. Sarah, they were not young because for the Lord, there is nothing impossible. The Lord can do anything with anyone, regardless of their age. Regardless of anything, the Lord can change everything around us and within us and make us go where he wants us to go. You know, today here, September 2019, those who are watching and you guys sitting here, I don't know what in the world you're thinking. I have no idea what you are thinking right now. But I can tell you this. In one year, if you listen to the Lord, you will be doing something amazing. In one year, you will, doing, you will be doing something that is so fabulous that you will be thinking, I never thought that I could do something like this. Because God can do wonderful things in your life still today. So please come with me in this journey with five questions that will help you to discover your vision. The first question is this. What are the things that make me happy? And I need you to write without thinking too deeply. Get your bulletin and write the answer. What are the things that make you happy? Don't think too much. Just write it. What are those things that make you happy? What is that? Write it down. Write it down. The second question is similar. What are the things that make you sad? If there is something that you see in the world, in your family, in the community, on TV, in your life, what is that that makes you sad? Write it down. Question number one, what makes you happy? Question number two, what makes you sad? Question number three, what are the things that you do that energizes you? There must be something that you like to do and you practice that. And while other people say, I'm exhausted after doing that, you feel energized and you say, I want to do that again. I just love to do this thing. Everybody else is exhausted after 20 minutes of doing that, whatever is what the activity you like to, to do, whether it's a sport or reading, whatever it is what you do, it doesn't matter. That thing that energizes you, for some people, 10 minutes of that is enough. But you, you can do it for one hour, and then you keep on going, and keep on going, and keep on going, and you just feel energized and energized that you don't want to stop. 
doing that. Question number three. Question number four. What things would I do if I had the money and time? In other words, if you would have plenty of money and plenty of time available to do whatever you want, what would you do, what would you do with that money and that time? And only you have that answer. Because it doesn't matter what your spouse likes, or your children like, or your parents like. It is a personal question to you. If you had, let's suppose you have plenty of money and plenty of time available. What would you do? What would you do? Well... Some people will say, well, I'll be watching TV all day. I'll sleep in every single day. That's my favorite thing to do. Well, yeah, you, you, you will like that. Who doesn't like that? But not every day. <laughs> there is a moment when you are like, okay, I'm done with this. I got enough vacation that I can take. You know? <laughs> you want to do something with your life. So imagine that you have all the money available for do, to do that and the time to do that, what is what would you do? That was question number four. And question number five, what things would I want others to say about me at my funeral? Imagine you live your life and you do, you do everything you want it, the way that you want it, but eventually you are going to die. So you are 140 years old. You are done with your life. <laughs> and it's the day of your funeral. So here we are in the church. We have the casket or ashes, whatever you choose. And then I call the people in the audience coming to your funeral service. And I say, is anyone healed here that would like to say something about such and such person? What would you like to hear from others saying about you? Write it down. He was what? She was what? My friends, these five questions are going to lead you to a process to discover the vision the Lord has for you. If you take the time to reflect on these questions, and please, if you are watching or listening, go to the website, vchurch.us, search for the bulletin, download the bulletin, and save it as PDF or print it. This is crucial for your future. It's your future. It's not my future. It's your life. It's not my life. I'm not asking anybody. I want you to invest time so you can find out how you can help me to do my work. I'm not asking you, hey, I want you to invest time doing this research about these five questions so you are going to end working for me. I'm not asking anybody to do any kind of research about things that you will do for anyone else but for you alone. It's your future. It's your life. Your destiny. What is ahead of you? Now, some people will say, but, but again, I'm too old for this kind of thing. No, you are never too old for this kind of thing. There is always more. You know, in God, there is always more. There is always more. He has more for you. It doesn't matter what kind of things you have accomplished in life. There is always more. There is more ahead of you. The question is, 
What is what you want to do? You want to do what you want, or would you like to do what he wants? Because when you follow this path that I just showed you, and you reflect about these questions, the Lord will show you that vision he has for you. Because he made you that way. There is hope for everyone. There is always a future for all of us believers. Always. Some people might feel, I'm too uh, old. You know, I don't have enough education, enough money. Right now, I'm, I don't look pretty. I'm not young anymore. It's too late for me. Thank you, but it's too late for me. I want you to know you are wrong. Because the Lord can do wonderful things in your life for your future. It's not about you. It's about him. He can change things for you. Now, for many years that I have been sharing this message with different people and friends came to me in different parts of, of uh, America, in Latin America. Some of them, they asked me the question, hey, Gian, how can I find out God's vision for my life? And I have shared with them these five crucial questions. And some of them, they really took it to the heart and they said, this is awesome. I like this. I like this. I never thought about that because I thought that I needed to come up with the plan. You don't come up with, with God's plan for you. You know what you do? You discover the plan. It's like the pomegranate. You need to cut it and find out what's inside of it. So some of these guys and girls throughout many years they loved these questions. They started to dig into it. And finally, they came up with a revelation. What is what the Lord wanted them to do? And then I heard wonderful things. People that said to me, you know, finally I got it. I know what I need to do now. But unfortunately, some of them, they, they went a little bit crazy. <laughs> because some of them said, you know what? I discovered that what the Lord wants me to do is to become an astronaut. Okay, I say, well, that's, that's great. I, I like the plan. But in some of those cases, they were just dreaming of something that is doable if it's God's will. Please listen to this. It's doable in God's will, but you cannot just Quit and abandon your responsibilities because you have a new vision for your future. You jumped into the uncertainty of God's will. What about your responsibilities? You cannot do that. So while you keep being responsible, you are going to look for that change. Because all of us have responsibilities. Some of us... At some point, we feel, I need to go to school and learn this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a full-time student. That sounds great. Who's going to pay your bills? Who's going to take care of your family? What about your responsibilities? There has to be a balance there. And that is one thing that I need to share with you guys, that you cannot just be irresponsible jumping into the new vision the Lord, you are discovering the Lord has for you. It is not that way. But there is a path that you must follow when you are discovering and developing God's vision for you. I want you to see this in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. Your love must be real. Whatever is what you do, whatever is what you are going to accomplish in the future, make sure that there is love in your heart and is real, is not fake. I know that some sometimes trick us, right? And we think they love us, but not really. That is not right. You need to make sure that you love people for real. Because at the end, whatever others do to you is their problem. It's not your problem. But you need to make sure, make sure that your love 
is real. That whatever you're going to do, you are going to do it from your heart with love. You need to make sure that there is no evil plan behind it. You only do what is good. Love each other in a way that makes you feel close like brothers and sisters. And give each other more honor than you give yourself. As you serve the Lord, work hard and don't be lazy. Be excited about serving Him. That, that's the path, my friends. It's about being honest with God, being honest with yourself, being honest with each other, and correct whatever we need to correct. My friends, in 2019, we have access to so many wonderful things, apps, wonderful discoveries and inventions. But not going way too far, 50 years ago, there were horrible wars in the world. Many of you have seen the battles, Second World War, our country fighting against the Nazis. Japan, all the evil things, and we needed to fight. Where is that strength today, friends? Where is that unity today to fight for our country, to fight for what is right? Where is it? You know what we see today? A bunch of people fighting for silly things like he said, she said. Arguments starting on Facebook because somebody put the picture of somebody else here or there. or <laughs> There is no seriousness today. In those days, young men, they wanted to fight for the country. They wanted to fight for what is right. And they were willing to give their own lives Saving and protecting the country. Where are those men today? Where are those women today? Willing to fight for what is right. And you know what else? When anyone went to fight in battles. And anyone was wounded. Even if because it was a mistake he made. You know what the rest of them did? They went to drag this wounded warrior and bring him back for their sake. They did not abandon wounded warriors there. Today, we see somebody that makes a mistake. You know what we do? We bury that person with sarcastic and cruel comments. Where is that camaraderie? Where is that brotherhood? Where is that loyalty today? There is no true Christianity. We are lacking of what is right. We are lacking in, in what is true, honest, and pure. This power portion of the scripture tells us exactly the path. Yes, the Lord has a plan for you. The Lord wants you to do things in your life. He wants to use you. Don't forget the purpose and the reason why. You should do it. Your love must be real. Respect others. Give honors to, honor to others. That is the right thing to do, my friends. We want to win. Who wants to lose? Nobody wants to lose. We want to win. And we are going to win. How can we win? When we do what is God's will and we do it right. And those battles whether in Germany or Austria, France, Italy, wherever the, 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 the warriors and soldiers were, many, many were wounded. We do not abandon the wounded warriors. We went to rescue them. Remember this, even if it was their mistake. We didn't say, you deserve it, idiot. I told you, don't put the grenade in your pocket. 
We, they didn't say that. You know what we did? We said, what you have done? Okay, let's get him back. Two, three of them, they went to save them and rescue them. Some of them without legs, without arms, but they came back. That strength, that character is lacking in today's society. We need to stop fighting for silly, stupid things. And let's get serious with, with what is right. What God wants us to do. Let's get serious, people. For the future, for the kingdom, for your future, for your children, for your grandchildren. Let's get serious about this. And enjoy every day. Of course. Let's laugh together. Let's eat together. Let's go places together. Doing what is right. That is what the Lord wants us to do. I guarantee you that. Now you, my friend, watching or listening, maybe you are wondering, wow, this is something that I would like to do, but, but I don't have the strength to do this. I don't know even where to start. Start when you give your heart to the good Lord. Give your heart to the Lord. Open your heart and say, I want to change. There is a prayer in the screen that I want to invite you to read it with all of your heart. Say with me, dear God, thank you so much for making me unique. You made me to be the only one, me in the entire universe forever. You made me so special. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for opening my eyes to see that you have a plan for my life. You gave me gifts and talents. You gave me skills and I want to use them. Please help me to see myself like you see me. Please, Lord, forgive me. Please, Lord, guide me in the name of Jesus. I believe you love me and guide me now and forevermore. My friend, the Lord Jesus loves you. He gave his life for you. Just receive that love in your heart. And like everybody else here in the church, declare with us, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. My life is going to be great and blessed this year, 2019. That's right. A blessed life. And you receive today the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the peace of God be with you. Enjoy your family and friends. See you next time. Bye. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light. Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight. Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served. We appreciate so much your time invested with Victory Church in Odessa, Texas.